This is five on your side at six, focused on you. A Chesterfield man accused of ramming a moving truck into the White House security barriers was back in court just hours ago. Thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Ann Allred. Our I-team has been covering the case since that crash happened last month. And tonight, we've learned new details of his past and his attorney's defense. Paula Vassan is here with the latest developments. Attorneys argue that because Cy Kundula was not armed the night of the White House incident and has no criminal history, he should be released on bond. A judge disagreed. In court filings this week, his public defender wrote that Kundula is a lawful permanent resident and has been lawfully in the country as a dependent of parents with lawful status for over half of his life. We also know Kundula did have an Indian passport, but it was taken the night he was arrested. Federal prosecutors still have him listed on a single charge of property damage. He told authorities last month when he was detained that he'd hoped to seize power following his U-Haul crash. While he never had a weapon, he did have a green notebook the night of the attack. In a memo obtained by the I-Team, writings in the book describe how he planned to overthrow the U.S. government. In one passage, he threatens consequence if civil unrest happens and promises to rebuild this world. The passage ended with a Nazi salute and a Nazi flag was seen on the ground the night of the attack last month. Kandula is due back in court for his preliminary hearing July 13th. Tonight, we're getting an inside look at the new headquarters for Emerson Electric. The global automation company has chosen Clayton to call home. Five Minutes Side's Travis Cummings is live in Clayton with new details about the move. Great announcement for our city. That's right, Ann. Emerson hired a company. They took three months to study and really look at other cities. They say people is what kept them here in St. Louis and what brings them to Forsyth Boulevard here which will soon be known as Emerson Towers. And thinking about our employees and the next future of our company is, is really, really heartwarming to me. Tears from Emerson Electric's CEO, Law Carson by mark the beginning of a new chapter for the company's journey in St. Louis. We are committed to this region. The Fortune 500 company, which manufactures automation products and provides engineering services, has chosen Clayton to call home after leaving its campus in Ferguson after more than a century. We're talking about uh, essentially 400 employees that we have in St. Louis that run the corporation in a 200 acre campus. So there was a misalignment of space. Two, three. Oh. <laughs> Emerson will run its core operation out of this 14-story building on Forsyth, now known as Emerson Tower. Those 400 employees will use the top three floors and portions of two other floors, 104,000 square feet. They'll have access to a garden terrace, a fitness center, and a conference training space. Carson Bay says retaining and attracting talent were key in the decision. That element became really important, not just in our decision to come here, but our, on our ability to create a space that is going to be inclusive, that's going to drive collaboration and innovation that we need in our company. Mayor Michelle Harris says it's a win-win. So many of our restaurants and businesses depend on the office foot traffic to be healthy. And so having more people out on the street is obviously going to be really good for them. And I know they're all really excited to welcome Emerson as well. The staff members will be here in the new building by mid to late 2024. Emerson is also going to continue its charitable giving of $200 million over the next 10 years. They say they're going to really focus on education throughout the city. We're live in Clayton. Travis Cummings 5 on your side. A live look at Bush Stadium. It is Pride Night at the ballpark. The Cardinals are back in town. They begin a three-game series against Cincinnati tonight. First pitch, 7-15. Meteorologist Jim Castillo has the weather first forecast and how are things looking for tonight's game? Incredible weather out there. You know, they only issue that air quality alert that goes until 8 p.m. And I did just check that ground level ozone is still in orange, but that air quality improves a little bit later and it's 81 by 7 o'clock and about 71 at 10 p.m. 
So weather headlines, air quality alert ends at 8, but it's reissued tomorrow, 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. So we're still dealing with that, and it's ground level ozone that is our biggest pollutant. And then the rain chances increase as we get into later tomorrow and into Sunday. And by the way, right now we're unhealthy for sensitive groups, and that's that orange color. Uh, so rain chances are improving. We're going to be dry tonight, though, and it's 82 right now if you're headed out. But uh, coming up at rain chance, I'll time it out for you in just a few minutes. The University City Pool is turning 90 years old, but plans for a birthday party are dead in the water. Last summer's catastrophic flooding left a tidal wave of repair work for the Parks Department. Five on your side, Tracy Hinson has an update on when the pool might reopen and what's keeping the doors shut. On July 26, 2022, the Heyman Park pool looked like this. And now this. The holdup? The pool pumps, we actually ordered those. I think it was approved by council, I think like on September 2nd. And they were just installed last week. Supply chain issues struck the pool repair work. So did lack of workers. Well, trying to find contractors to do the work, because when it's a smaller scope of work or a smaller dollar amount, uh, they're not as eager to take those jobs as they are the bigger jobs because there's a lot of construction uh, work going on in the area. Dunkel is trying to get that pool open, but it's not going fast enough for anxious pool goers. I do get calls myself. I know I probably average three to four a day asking about it, but I know that is small compared to you know our main line that goes into the recreation division. Pool season has already started, so when the University City Pool does open, will there be lifeguards to fill these seats? We work through an outside contractor to Midwest Pool Management, and they work on uh, the hiring aspects and overseeing the guards and that stuff, and we're in constant contact with them, and they are actively hiring individuals and getting ramped up to open as well. Ramped up to open, but when? I would say here in the next several weeks that we will be, be opening doors. In time for the peak heat of summer, I hope. Tracy Hinson, five on your side. The Heman Pool is the only one in U City, but the Parks Department does run a few splash pads at area parks if you are looking to cool off in that area. Parts of South St. Louis are under a precautionary boil advisory following a water main break. A 20-inch pipe broke at Lansdowne in Chippewa, flooding the streets and causing low water pressure in some areas. There have been more than 60 water main breaks in the city since last October. The Board of Aldermen is considering a bill to raise water rates. This latest break happened around the same time as the second reading of that proposal. What we need to remember is the fact that we need to sustain day-to-day -day operations of our water division, correct, right? So when Highway 40, that water main broke earlier in May, that will take approximately a million dollars to repair. Here are the neighborhoods affected by that boil advisory. Parts of Bevo Mill, Boulevard Heights, Carondelet, Dutchtown, Holly Hills, Mount Pleasant, and Lindenwood Park. The City Water Division has found no evidence of contamination. People in the affected areas are asked to boil tap water before drinking and cooking. Coming up, a health alert in St. Louis County. A man dies after eating raw oysters he bought in Manchester. Plus, St. Louis restaurants seeing profits dry up. The changes owners want in the liquor license process.